Today at Speedy's Garage, I'm working on a couple of breathing upgrades for a Project Orange Crush. Um, I picked up a 90 millimeter uh, Arrington Performance billet throttle body from a guy on one of the forums. Uh, he was parting his car out and sold it for a pretty reasonable price, so I snatched that up. And to get the most out of it, I had Arrington send me one of the um, Magnuson blower snouts that has been ported to 90 millimeters to match. To swap out the throttle body and blower snout, you just need some simple hand tools, um, a breaker bar to release tension to take the belt off the blower pulley, a 12 millimeter wrench socket, 10 millimeter socket, uh, a knife, an uh, inch pound torque wrench, a regular torque wrench, 5 millimeter um, T handle for the pulley bolts, an uh, 8 millimeter T handle um, for the hose clamps. And you will need to go ahead and get a adapter, or at least I did for my setup. It's a silicone intake hose that's four inches on one side and three and a half on the other. And this is to go from the 90 millimeter throttle body to the modified Mopar cold air intake that I have on my car. I have been extremely happy with the Magnuson supercharger on the Challenger. It's done everything I've asked it to do. Um, it doesn't run very high IATs. And so I wanted to get the most out of it that I could um, rather than try to upgrade or do something else. So when I had the blower snout, this, this new 90 millimeter blower snout come in, I looked around it at additional pulley options. The current pulley on the car is a 2.65 and it makes between 14 and 15 pounds of boost. But I had heard a 2.5 inch pulley would fit with some modification. So I contacted a machinist. I had him make me up a 2.5 inch pulley for the Magnuson blower. The only problem was it wouldn't fit over that housing area behind the mounting plate. So I took it, the actual um, blower snout to a machine shop and they put it on a CNC machine with a ball bit and just came around and took off 75 thousandths of an inch and now I can run a 2.5 inch pulley. I have no idea if it's going to help the car or not, if it's going to go any faster or make any more power but I figured well I had all the parts off I might as well and it, it wasn't very expensive to do it. For about the price of a dinner and a movie I had all this done and um, we're going to try it out at the track. I'm only going to run the, the 2.5 inch pulley on the on the drag strip. The, the 2.65 makes plenty of power for the street. Um, I can spin the tires at 70 or 80 miles an hour as it is so I'm not going to run this one all the time. This will only be for the track and I'll post the results up on my website uh, once I have them. Okay so I'm going to start by loosening the pulley bolts. It's a lot easier to do that when the belt is holding the pulley still for you. Um, once I get those loosened up, I'll go over to the uh, cold air intake 8mm uh, band clamp bolts, take those off, and then I'll get to work on the bracket and then finally the four bolts that hold the blower snout to the blower. forget to remove all your hoses. I'm going to take the um, PCV hose or the hose that connects into the oil filler neck off to get to these other two vacuum hoses. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the <clears throat> idler pulleys off along with the bracket. I'm going to try to keep the belt from getting too out of shape. And now I've removed the 10 millimeter bolt on the idler bracket here, everything else is connected to the snout, so now I'm just going to start working on the four uh, 12 millimeter bolts that hold the snout to the actual blower base. There are only four bolts that hold the blower snout to the base, but it seems like there's always one bolt that's going to give you trouble. And on this, it's going to be this one back here. The clearances are real tight around the fuel rail. Uh, mine has <coughs> Uh, modified fuel rail. It's got a little 3-8 spacer underneath it for the taller 80-pound uh, Ford injectors that, that we used on my car. So I have a little bit tighter um, clearance than you might on yours. I don't really want to take the fuel rail off because then you open up the possibility of you know crimping an O-ring or pinching an O-ring on a fuel injector and having more work to do. So what I ended up having to find was a uh, 
old school 12 millimeter non ratcheting socket, or I'm sorry, uh, crescent wrench. And you get about, I had to take the oil cap off to give me room because you have to get about a quarter inch of a turn one way and then a quarter inch of a turn the other way. And it's coming off, but it's just going to be time consuming to get to. But that's how I did it. So I finally got the little bolt off that I was having trouble with. I got the blower snout off and up on the workbench where I can have a look at it. This is why I had trouble with that bolt. It's supposed to be a stud that stays in the base of the blower housing. And then the nut just has to turn a few threads to, to actually come off. And on mine, the whole stud came loose. So I had to spend some time taking that out. And then it would get to where it would actually touch the, the uh, backside of the blower snout. So I'd have to wiggle it out a little bit and you know loosen it some more. But anyway, I got it out. I'm going to lock tight this back in place in the blower base so that hopefully I don't have this trouble if I ever have to swap uh, uh, blower snouts in the future. So here are the two Magnuson snouts side by side. This is obviously the uh, one that's set up for the stock throttle body, uh, 82 millimeter, and then here is the larger 90 millimeter. And you can see it's more than just um, milling out the throttle body area because the um, standard one has a groove cut in it for a gasket and the 90 millimeter version does not. It actually uses a, a flat gasket like this. This is the Magnuson OE blower snout and there's a plastic or some kind of, um, it's not metal, I don't, I'm not sure if it's plastic or very, very hard rubber, uh, but it's a coupler that goes between the um, blower snout shaft and the actual shaft that's on the rotor group uh, in the base. And this is stuck on there and I wasn't sure if it's supposed to be reused or if a new one was supposed to come with the, with the new snout or what, so I called a buddy of mine. There's almost no information uh, on this on the internet. So I called a buddy of mine that's, that I know has done a lot of work on these. Um, he goes by Iron Challenger on the forums and I asked him what he did and he said just to use a, a lot of WD-40 to lubricate it and then use a, a long flat blade screwdriver to just come gently behind the um, piece and as you can see you can work it you can work it out. The WD-40 certainly helped. I'll let it soak for a couple of minutes and now it's going to come out of there no problem. So just keep this in mind if you do this yourself but this is an extra step, and he did tell me Magnuson will not sell this part separate, so be careful not to tear it up. Install is just the reverse of removal. I did lock tight the stud I spoke of earlier, and if yours happens to come out, um, make sure you account for the thickness of the blower snout as well as the bolt that actually, or the nut that actually goes on there and holds it. Um, the, the stud will actually thread in farther than it needs to go. And then if you put the snout on, you're not able to get the nut on the, uh, on the stud. So I kind of set it, marked it, locked tight it, let it dry, and now it should be good to go. And then that coupler I showed you earlier, I went ahead and put it against the, um, the uh, rotor, uh, what I'm trying to say, rotor shaft, so that I could use it as a guide to line up the three dowels on the uh, snout. So I bolted the blower snout back on and I looked all over the internet and couldn't find any torque specs. Um, so keeping in mind that this is aluminum, I just did them tight plus one eighth of a turn. And I did a crisscross pattern. I started with this one and then I got the little nut on the back side and then this one and the one on the bottom. And I just kept doing that until I got them all so they felt about the same and, and they were tight and then um, I did one more eighth of a turn with just a regular old uh, crescent wrench. Next you want to hook up the bracket, uh, the idler pulley bracket, and put all the bolts in loose and then you want to start by tightening the ones on the block first. And again just snug, um, the back uh, timing, timing set cover is aluminum. And then tighten the um, uh, blower bolts. And again snug not too tight because you're dealing with aluminum. A lot of times when you get a newer part than you're actually removing, there'll be some small manufacturing changes that you might want to have to be ready for. Um, in my case, the original blower snout that I had had a 3 8 um, 90 degree barb coming out of the front of it for the PCV. The new one had a half inch straight barb. 
Um, luckily, I have an all angles design catch can, which is extremely uh, universal. You can actually turn it in the mounting bracket. It has different ports um, to help you get the best angles for the hose. It came with both one half inch and three eighths inch um, barbs. So I just swapped out the uh, three eighths barb that was here for a plug and put a half inch barb here and used a piece of a half inch um, pressure hose to hook it back up. The torque spec on your bracket bolts is 22 foot pounds and then the idler pulleys is uh, 40 foot pounds. Next, reroute your belt and triple check that the belt is routed properly and properly seated on all the pulleys. Um, you will go ahead and, and put the blower pulley on and just snug the uh, little Allen bolts and then come in with a inch pound torque wrench and the torque setting on those is 106 inch pounds. You know, do them in a cross pattern. Next, mount up your throttle body, um, making sure to use the gasket that's supplied. And you want to tighten the 10 millimeter throttle body bolts to 105 inch pounds in a cross pattern. And make sure you have your torque wrench set to inch pounds, not foot pounds. Now in my car, I modified my Mopar cold air intake to fit with the Magnuson supercharger. Um, some people say these are hot air intakes, but my car actually picked up about 30 rear wheel horsepower uh, with this intake installed over the stock air box with a K&N filter. So it works decent at least. <clears throat> so now I've got to modify the new uh, four inch to three inch 45 degree silicone elbow to fit. And a little trick I picked up along the way is that if you put a band clamp on your silicone elbow or silicone pipe or whatever, get it set to make sure it's even all the way around, then you can just use a really sharp knife. This is a brand new blade in this, by the way. So just get it started and you just cut right next to the Hose clamp. You'll typically get a very nice clean cut. So I'll trim that right there and I always put the spot where the bolt is on the very bottom so that even if it's a little off like that, I mean I'll trim that up and clean it up, but it's on the bottom, you won't see it anyway. So there we go with some careful trimming of the 45 degree silicone elbow. We're able to make the Mopar cold air intake fit with the Magnuson and the 90 millimeter throttle body. Now we just need to fire it up, make sure we don't have any vacuum leaks. So everything looked good there. We didn't get any high idle or uh, check engine lights or anything like that. I didn't hear any sounds. So I don't have any vacuum leaks. Everything appears to be um, reassembled correctly. I contacted my tuner, Mike at ostdino.com and asked him how he wanted me to data log this so we can get the tune uh, set up for this throttle body and blower snout. And he basically wanted a, uh, a data log of just idle. So I gave him about uh, a minute and a half of that. And then he wanted just some cruising around town. So I gave him about three or four minutes of me just cruising down the road. Uh, we'll see what he comes back with, and uh, I'll post some updates once we're all finished tuning and, and getting the throttle body um, established with the car. After installing the throttle body and doing the tune testing for Mike at OST, he did have to add quite a bit of fuel to get the air fuel back in line after that throttle body was installed. So that definitely showed more air is getting into the engine and the required fuel to go with it. The air fuel actually went from about 11.7, 11.8, all the way up to 12.2 or 12.3 when I started running the car and um, he had to add quite a bit of fuel to get it back down to you know 11.5 to 11.7 and of course more air and more fuel mean more power i'm not one to go take the car to a dyno every time i make a change i prefer to go to the track and let the track performance results 
uh, let me know if I'm getting more performance or not. However, I did run my data logs through TT Dyno software, which has been proven to be pretty accurate uh, comparing stock cars and modified cars. Um, you have to be extremely uh, diligent with the data that you enter into TT Dyno to get accurate results. And I'm very careful to data log uh, ambient temperature, barometric pressure, etc. So I know exactly what the car was seeing at the time the data log was recorded. Those are the values I enter into TT Dyno. And I also am very careful with the weight of the car. I take into consideration just about everything down to the weight of the fuel in the tank at six pounds per gallon. And I'm careful to record how much fuel is in the tank during the logs. The 90 millimeter throttle body showed about a 40 rear horsepower and 40 rear torque gain um, in the TT Dyno software versus the stock throttle body. And that's right in line with what people see on an actual physical dyno. The 2.5 inch pulley, it showed about another 20 to 30 rural horsepower and rural torque gain, but only in the lower RPM ranges. As it approached red line, the two graphs, the 2.5 pulley versus the 2.65 pulley, uh, came together. So I don't know if I'm getting belt slip or if the supercharger is just maxed out at the upper RPM ranges. I will go to the track and test these modifications to see if I'm getting any more performance out of the car. Uh, so far, the best it ran on the stock throttle body and the 2.65 pulley was a 10.925 at 128.60. I'm hoping to pick up at least a tenth or two and a couple of mile per hour. Be sure to check my website, www.speediesgarage.net, for those track results. According to my data logs, the 2.65 pulley makes about 15 pounds of boost on this Arrington 6 liter stroker motor. The 2.5 pulley made 16 to 16 and a half pounds of boost. So I am picking up a little bit. To record that accurately, I wired in a GM three bar map sensor because the stock two bar map sensor has a clamp on it and only records boost up to 14 and a half. So I wanted to know exactly how much I was making. Check back on my website soon to see how that's installed. And with the 90 millimeter throttle body installed and the 2.5 pulley, I know I'm maxing out the performance of the supercharger. But this 90 millimeter throttle body is set up for nitrous should I ever decide I need more.